uh, we'll, we'll talk to you about the cell, we'll show you the cell, but when there's maintenance and everything else going on, just stay away from it. It's lasted this long, I guess it lasts a couple more days. <laughs> <laughs> That's encouraging. <laughs> Okay. Uh, oh, yours. If, I'm curious about when we put the push cord, which will only be on our second time because they'll be preset the first time. I when you put them in? Well, when you, you're going to take them out at night and clean them out and do right, your samples and everything right. else. Uh, they should probably, in the morning, it's fine to get them in. Okay, so just, uh, I missed that. Uh, I'm not saying you got to stay up all night and get them in there at 3 o'clock in the morning as soon as you're done. Some will be. Yes, some of you may not know your interest yet, but you will be assigned one. <laughs> Um, and anything else you want to say? So, why don't we start? Meredith. I'm Meredith Heller. I'm from the Marine Biological Lab, and I'm here to take a, f uh, a few samples for mass ratio uh, carbon isotopes of bacterial nucleic acids of free living bacteria, hopefully above the uh, seep sites, and work on the cores. <laughs> yeah, right. <that's> <laughs> My name is Jonathan Eisen. I'm at Stanford, and I'm, other than to just enjoy the experience, I'm here to be Dana's faithful assistant during her work. <laughs> Jonathan Great. worked. Jonathan worked in my lab as a senior undergraduate all last year, and just had two years ago. Two years. What and as a tech for a while. That's true. He just kept <laughs> staying, and he kept coming back, and he just had his first paper published in JBAC. Oh, well, congratulations. Which we have reprints available. <laughs> 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 it just came the day I was like, uh, So I'm, I'm Bruce Turner and I'm from Harvard University and work on wood borers in the deep sea and anything else Colleen wants done. <laughs> 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 Oh yeah, anybody that wants to learn how to make a monkey fist or anything of that kind we of thing. We should you know. pick right. a time. Right, I would love to learn yeah, how to make a monkey fist. Maybe we should pick a time. Well, we I could got some spare rope. Yeah, we <laughs> well, I put an, I gave you a bunch yeah, we of brought stuff. A three, we have three and I, feet, I, I put a bunch on my bed downstairs and that disappeared. I don't know where that <laughs> went to, but anyway, I have a couple of spare monkey fists downstairs. Too. So, well, we'll set, we'll, um, everyone should watch the blackboard in the main lab for for notices. I haven't found chalk yet, but I'll keep taping things to it. So we'll have a monkey fist time tomorrow. How's that? Mm -hmm. Crafts. <laughs> <laughs> we can uh, we can also do it one at a time, you know, whenever anybody can. It's not a difficult thing to do. And then there at the end of the cruise there will be <laughs> there will be a monkey fist. On your own contest. That's right. This is like summer. <laughs> <laughs> Since you never really give us this quiz, what do you tell your students? <laughs> that they're not going to have a quiz? <laughs> they do. They actually do have a quiz. Or they at least they have a midterm. Okay. Pari Chordia, and um, I'm an undergrad at Harvard. I'm here for the experience and other things that Colleen made. It's okay. Pari, you're with Martin on chorus. Pari actually worked in my lab this whole year with uh, Toby Kellogg, who's an independent investigator, doing plant DNA. So this is really not They function related. like plants. <laughs> yeah, these are kind of like plant-like communities on the bottom of the ocean. Uh, my name's Kelly Smith. I'm a grad student at Caltech, and I work for Mary Lidstrom, who was contacted by Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in collecting marine methanotropes, and so um, wherever we can get some, I'm going to try the seawater and the, um, scrape scrape off the shells of the mussels, and uh, we're also going to take a stab at the um, symbionts. Uh, we think that at least one of the potential symbionts is probably a methanotrope, so we'll see if we can get it in pure culture. And the reason I want to do that <laughs> is because we are an environmental engineering lab, and we're interested in nanotrophs for biological remediation of hazardous waste. And so I'm technically an engineer, mm -hmm. and I would like to learn anything anyone has to teach me, <laughs> because this is all new, everything. Now, is there a particular reason for an interest in marine methanotrophs? For um, marine because, there's, because they're salt tolerant. 
a lot of the the uh, contaminated environments we're looking at are um, naval bases. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I point out, among the, um, the known free-living thanatrops in pure culture, I think there's only one marine strain, which is uh, A45 right, yeah. in, in Mary's lab. So they all are freshwater. And we're interested in getting other marine strains for comparison phylogenetically with the mm -hmm. symbiotic bacteria. Mm -hmm. So Mary actually cultured up to eight of them at one time, eight, mm. eight marine anthanotropes, but I don't think anyone has maintained the others. Yeah. yeah. These are free living. Mm -hmm. The thanotropes are hard to maintain because you have to keep them in a gas phase of methane and oxygen, and, and they're, they're very meticulous. And they're very <laughs> meticulous. They get contaminated easily. <laughs> yeah. But didn't, if I can ask some dumb questions, um, didn't you or somebody recently find some symbiotic Yes, that's what we're here to do, Andy. <laughs> I'll tell Duh. you about it. <laughs> I'll tell you about what we're doing. Okay. <laughs> when, when, when it's her turn. When it's fine. <laughs> okay. Maybe I should have started. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, Francie. Uh, my name is Francie Elise, and I just finished my junior year at Harvard. And this is my initiation into Colleen's lab, and <laughs> I have an assigned interest under Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Francie's actually going to be working in the lab this summer, um, going after the methanol dehydrogenase chain using the polymerase chain reaction, which is the second enzyme that catalyzes the oxidation of methane. It catalyzes methanol to formate. Formate. Thank you. I always get confused. <laughs> formate. And I have a t-shirt, though, that I have it on there, so. That's right. you wear. So all quizzes it. in biochemistry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm Colleen Kavanaugh. <laughs> And uh, you all must know me, because I invited you. Um, and our, my primary interest in uh, being on this particular cruise is that in 1984, there was a, a uh, geochemistry cruise and a geology cruise to the Florida Escarpment. Uh, the group was interested in looking at carbonates. And they had along uh, a graduate student, uh, what's his name, Ruth, what's Stepco Galubic's graduate student's name, Jamie Hook. Jamie Hook, yeah. Who uh, was interested in looking at carbonate boring organisms. And he had attended a lecture of mine earlier that year and knew I did EM and came to me for help for EM. And so he had all my fixatives on board. And lo and behold, when they were diving on the escarpment, at the base of it, which is basically, there's no map here, um, the Gulf is like this with Florida, and the shelf is very, very shallow. And then it plunges 3,500 meters. And this is the limestone escarpment. And at the base of that escarpment, what they found were hydrothermal vent-like communities, which were mussels, primarily dominated by mussels, tube worms, uh, gastropods. Mm -hmm. There are some holotherians. Are there brachyurans? There are no. 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 Um, and, but there were no hot, there were no hot springs. It was just cold seeps. And, uh, since then, they've figured out that uh, there's hypersaline water under the shelf that's sinking, carrying with it old methane and sulfide, and then when it hits the abyssal plain and presumably uh, clay sediments, it seeps laterally. And this provides the energy sources for this community, rather than the hot springs, rather than the hot water coming up. And uh, Jamie, because he attended my my lecture in Lynn Margulis's class on symbiosis uh, ended up fixing some gills for me on that first 84 cruise from the two, from the mussels, and lo and behold, when we looked at it, they had uh, two types of symbionts. The main ones that we're interested in here are the these larger ones that have complex intracytoplasmic membranes, and which we showed with enzyme assays are likely to be methane oxidizing bacteria. There are also small gram-negative uh, coccoid or rod-shaped cells that have no membranes, that their identity is not yet known. Um, I'll, I'll let Dan talk about those. And uh, so anyway, we're interested. The primary reason here is for getting uh, fresh material. 